to say that anybody is really making significant plays and jumping off the screen on a weekly basis is just, it wouldn't be true. I really need to start seeing that. Boyd over the middle, and there it is from Ridley. We see it out of him all the time. Second touchdown of the day. And that is going to put us back in the lead. It's going to be 14 to 13 after the extra point. All right, so we're picking things up here in week four. We, are, of course, coming off of that loss with the Buccaneers, 16 to 10 to fall to one and two. And this week we have the 49ers. We are not going to be watching this game. I do think that I want to get past a couple of games. I might get us to week six, maybe. Uh, we'll see. And then maybe we'll even explore a trade or two option for ourselves because we do have some players on the roster that I'm not 100% sure will be here next season. All right. So I just went ahead, did the training, did the advancing, and it looks like we lost to the San Francisco 49ers. Ooh, it was a shootout at least, 41 to 35, surprisingly enough. Um, and yeah, so that's where we're standing right now. I do think I would like to get past the Falcons yet. And then I'm thinking maybe the Giants game. Yeah, I think that would be a good pace. Get us to week six. Um, and then after week six, we could probably sim a couple more games. Um, we do have storylines. I'm not sure what this is going to be, but let's find out. Press conference week five. This should be good, huh? We're five weeks in. Oh, they're going to have me blame somebody, aren't they? Oh. Oh, I hate this. I gotta, I gotta say, of course. But that, that's gonna, this is gonna lead to something else, right? If you had to look into the future, how many wins do you think this team can finish with? Oh, this sucks because this team is definitely not ready. I'm gonna stick with eight and nine. I don't even think that's possible to be honest. I think we're gonna end up going like five and eleven or something. Oh, thanks, dude. I don't like how some of these questions are posed. We'll earn extra XP if we do. Oh, and five staff points. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, ever since we did the first one, like, listen here, okay? The position battles sometimes are broken. In hindsight, I should have just said yes to the position battle and then just made the other dude win. Right? Like, I could have just forced him to get some of those those plays or something. I could have took the dude out, and he, he would have had no choice but to win. I wanted to keep it realistic. Don't do it. Okay? Because the game gave me a stupid one. It gave me one. And if you weren't here for that one, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, we did a position battle. And that's why everybody's got red arrows, by the way. I mean, yes, obviously, they would still be like that right now with us having a 1-3 and three record. But it was like that as, as soon as week one hit. Because it gave me a left-end battle. I want you guys to look at this here, and do you think that there's a left-hand battle between these two players? I want you to take a look at the age, the contract, the overall difference between Draymond Jones and Sean Robinson, right? Nobody in their right mind is like, I'm going to start Robinson, because I just signed Draymond Jones. He was one of our bigger ticket free agents items. He was one of our biggest fines. Why would I not start him? They forced me into one anyway. I said no, because there isn't a position battle to be had. And somehow that made the entire team hate me. So now everybody has bad morale, everybody. So learn from my mistakes. If they ask you about a position that you just know that there's never gonna be a competition for, just say yes and fudge the numbers. Save yourself the hassle because now, would this team have been competing much better without that? I don't know. I can't say for certain. But I feel like we would at least be a little bit better because we wouldn't have overalls and ratings drop because of our morale loss. So just something to I wanted to share with you guys because it sort of it sort of irked me a little bit how bad it, it messed it up. I feel like everything in this game that they add or they adjust or whatever, they all have great intention, but horrible delivery. Right? Like when I heard storylines. I was thinking something similar to what like the NBA 2K series does. And you know, I know it can get repetitive as well. Obviously, if you play NBA 2K, I'm sure you can relate, but you can't say that it's not more complex and something better to have to deal with than what Madden offers. And that's just sort of the case with every situation with Madden. Now, what I will say, however, is I think the drafting area is getting much better. I do. I, I like the drafting. I just wish there was a couple of more features in there. That's all. That's all I hope. It's just a few more features for the draft. Um, 
I like the ideas behind the motivations for players. I like all that stuff. It's just that it seems like every time they do these things, there's always something that just doesn't work right. You know, like like they you could see the good intention there, but by the time it got here, it just wasn't good. So anyway, let me stop rambling. Four weeks into the season, this is what our rookie quarterback is looking like. Not the hottest of starts. 1,007 yards, five touchdowns, four picks, 64% completion. 85.6 rating. He's taken eight sacks, which is not good. That's average to a game. But overall, I see the vision with Boyd. Now, we are still trying to figure out our playbooks, so we may see some changes in these numbers. I thought he played pretty decent the last game that we watched against the Buccaneers, even though it was a loss. We'll continue to mess around with the playbooks and the schemes to see if I can find something that I'm happy with. I am fully ready to move on to a 4-3, though. I, I just am. And I think we know what, we're going to do that right now. And for those of you who are not familiar with the difference is between a 3-4 and a 4-3, I've mentioned it a few times in other videos, uh, specifically Madden 24 tip videos. I believe I spoke about it in the depth chart guide. What you do is when you go from a 3-4, like we have here, you have four linebackers. You know, a 3-4 is three down linemen four linebackers to a four three you essentially take one of these guys and you move them down the line now it's going to change how some people play for instance defensive ends in a three four are better suited to play d tackle in a four three you will still need one bigger guy to play d tackle right but a lot of these guys like somebody like draymond jones who's more in between he's not a huge nose tackle and he's not a speed rusher. He's somewhere in between. They can be used as what's called sort of a three technique. You'll hear that term a lot if you're watching football. It's just a defensive tackle that is really an all around threat. He can rush the passer. He can stop the run. He can, you know, gap contain. He, you know, he can do it all. He can rotate around. And that is what a lot of three, four ends can become if you're in a four, three, which is why you can look at defensive ends and defensive tackles when you're trying to find your D line. Your linebackers, however, in a 3-4, your outside guys, so Clowney and Johnson here, those guys are edge rushers. And in a 3-4, the edge rushers stand up as linebackers. In a 4-3, they are the defensive ends. So what you'll see is the defensive tackle multiply here, so there's one and two where Bobby Brown is, and then where Jones is will be out here more between him and Stevens, and, or Brown will be out here between him and Horns. You'll see four guys down here. Your defensive ends or your speed rushers at the outside linebackers become the defensive ends. So what I have to do is drop all of these guys down to the left end, right end positions, um, and then change these guys to defensive end or defensive tackle positions, and then move the middle linebackers around to match up as outside linebackers. And there's a few reasons I want to do this with the Panthers. One, we don't have great uh, edge rushers right now. We just don't. We definitely don't have guys that can play all around the field out of edge rushing because in a 3-4, a lot of the times the outside linebackers will also be in charge of dropping into zone. And nobody wants to Davian Clowney covering zone coverage. That's just, that's just the truth. So I want to have Thompson as our middle linebacker one. I'll have Wallace as one of the outside linebackers, and then we'll also get a chance to start Jacquez Green, who was a unexpected uh, gift from the draft, right? I just took a flyer on him. I liked what I saw, and it paid off. He can get in there. He can develop better, all sorts of things. It'll also allow Brown to go back to, I think, what his natural position is. I mean, I could be, you guys could say I'm wrong, but that's just what I feel. I feel like he made the most noise in the 4-3. It's where he made his, his name for himself. And it also allowed Draymond Jones to be the three technique. So I, I just like the makeup of it better. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna go ahead. Um, it, for you guys, it's gonna be a split second. For me, it's probably gonna be about five to 10 minutes. And I'll be back here with you guys with our new defense. All right, folks, and here we have it. I have gone through, I have changed the positions that I needed to change. And this is what our starting front seven looks like now. Of course, DJ Wanham would be the starter here, but he is injured. We have a lot of defensive linemen because there was so many. You know, I mean, essentially, you're taking five positions and you're boiling, boiling it down to four when you switch from a 3-4 to a 4-3 because you have two outside linebackers, two defensive ends, and defensive tackles. So we have like five or six defensive tackles <laughs> and um, like five uh, defensive ends, and we only have five linebackers for three positions. So it's... Um, 
it's it's going to definitely be something that has to get shaken out over the course of like an off season trading whatever the case is just to get the the balance to every position better the reason that i was really looking forward to making the switch is i feel like we have a big shift coming in when it comes to our pass rushers um and we can just start fresh i love derrick brown as our number one defensive tackle i like draymond jones as a, a really good second option there for a couple of seasons until we either bring somebody else in through free agency or draft somebody well and build them up i really want to get green on the field i think he's going to be very good for us down the line i love his ability to to drop back into zone coverage and i feel like we've been missing that especially on tight ends this season i want us to be able to cover guys in the flats and not have Jadavian Clowney out there just looking completely out of position. So I have him at his native position here of right end where he was lining up from the clip that made him famous. Everybody knows which clip I'm talking about. If not, I'm sure if you search his name and, you know, a big play, that'll be the first one you see. And yeah, so I'm happy with what we got right now. Uh, we only have five linebackers. It's Thompson, Green, and Wallace. We had Shareless on the team and I went ahead and I signed Graham from our practice squad who will fill in as our backup for now until we can bring some different bodies in or who knows maybe he develops nicely as well we will see but uh, this is what it looks like now we are in 95 percent scheme fit somebody put it in the comments uh, a couple weeks ago well yeah cbs because they just switched not that long ago you are correct and i forgot this team was already pretty much a 4-3 until like a season or two ago in real life. So it makes sense that there's such a fit for this system. And that's why I wanted to bring it back to us. Sometimes, I mean, yeah, you can take years upon years to revamp everything, but I ran a 3-4 last year. I miss the 4-3. I remember loving the 4-3 in past Maddens and I wanna see if I can bring it back in this one. And if those of you who may still watch me from my RFL days, um, you guys know, I was a menace with the 4-3 defense, okay? And that's not even me trying to, to break. I just was. I, I always had it locked down. It, it helped that I had a really good defense, though. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, I want to try to recreate that a little bit. So we got the 4-3 in place. We have the 95% scheme fit. I decided to start with Chicago's, and we'll see where it goes from there. They have a lot of different formations. 4-3, big nickel, 46, nickel, dollar, and dime. Love the spread of formations, so I definitely want to see how this plays for us in the next game that we watch. And speaking of sort of a, a shifting around on our defensive line, I do feel as if it's time for us to move on from Jadavian Clowney. I just don't see a good spot for him to, to stay with his team, 33 years old. I feel like we can bring somebody in that's going to, to better us down the line. And right now we're not competing, right? We're not competing. Clowney's gonna wanna be somewhere where he's competing at least for, for something, right? Um, Dane Jackson, sort of same situation. He's going to be 29 next year. Moten, I would like to bring Moten back. I don't want to have to worry about, you know, shifting around the, the offensive line. But the problem is we only have 11 million left right now. We do not have a lot of money left, which means somebody's going to have to leave. And I'm pretty sure that that somebody has to be Bryce Young. He's young. He's a 75. We've been building him up this season so far. I, I mean, look. I'm not saying Boyd is is already surplanted everything and he's like the quote unquote franchise guy, but if somebody on this team is going to be the franchise guy, it's going to be Boyd. It's just, that's just the way it is. So I'm going to try and see if I can find if there's any teams that would make sense for Bryce Young to go to, and I will report back when I'm done with that. One team that I found that desperately needs a quarterback and, you know, this actually could be a pretty good fit is the Giants. They have Desmond Ritter, who somehow is a star dev in this game. I'm not quite sure how. Uh, Mac Jones, who also somehow has a star dev in this game. Uh, again, not sure how. Daniel Jones, third quarterback on the depth chart. Wow. So they've done quite a few. Um, they've done uh, quite a few things to try and get the quarterback position dialed in. All right, so after looking through the team and everything, this is what I came up with for a trade package. Obviously, Bryce Young is a young quarterback, but I cannot rule out the fact that the Giants know that we moved on from him for a reason. We drafted somebody else, and he has normal development. He's now 24, and he's not going to fetch, you know, a first or second round pick like he probably would have maybe a season to go before a tough, a tough outing, right? 
So because of that, I'm gonna have to just take the lesser of the trades, right? I didn't see much more than what this was offering. That would make sense for us. Some CPU teams offered way more than they should have, and I don't wanna take advantage of the CPU this year. So I, you know, I just, I put this in my trade calculator. This comes out to a pretty fair trade. We have like a 100 or 200 point um, favorability for the extra six round pick. But if we didn't have that included, then we had a, we were lower on the totem pole. And I feel like even though we are trying to off a quarterback that we are no longer needing and we don't want to have to try and resign after the season, I mean, it's, it's still a young quarterback that could turn into a franchise guy for the Giants. So I'm going to see if they'll take this trade and we'll see what happens. And they do. So we have a fourth rounder this year, a fourth rounder next year that fills in the two fourth rounders that we lost through trading earlier um, in the off season. And we also have an extra six rounder this year now to go along with it. So the only draft pick we are now missing from this year is a fifth round pick, I believe. And yeah, I mean, it's, it was time. We weren't gonna, we weren't gonna pick up his option. We weren't gonna re-sign him. It was just time, right? And now he has a chance to start in New York and I hope that he has you know maybe we'll see him actually no shot we might see him in a week I just realized that <laughs> that was not on purpose let's just take a look and see is there somebody that we want to bring back on from our practice squad to our active roster or do we want to potentially sign somebody different out of free agency we are looking for linebackers now that we made the switch we have a lot of defensive linemen Let's check out free agency and see if maybe there's a an off-ball linebacker we could bring in. So let's see. Maybe we could find a mentor and place them behind Green. That would be ideal, in my opinion. Like right here, Denzel Perryman, that guy that can help mentor the younger guys. So let's see here. Um, we can fit his contract. So let's bring him on. So I moved Perryman behind Green to be the mentor there. So that should help him throughout the season. And then... I'm almost wondering if we want to just do a straight. I like Green or Graham. I do, but I'm not a fan of Sherilus. He's just not a very good overall prospect right now, and I it sucks to say it, but it just it's the case. Um, so maybe I move him to. Oh, I can't even move him to practice squad. Wow. Okay, we're gonna release Sherilus. That's gonna give us 580 thousand back, and it should give us a little bit more wiggle room to bring in somebody. Uh, Jalen Graham being there. I might move him inside and then bring in another veteran for for Wallace so that he has a mentor as well. Okay, and now this is what our linebackers room look like. We have Anthony Barr here as a mentor to help Trevon Wallace. And then we have Graham here on the inside because he doesn't really need any mentorship. He's a young guy. He has a lot of development to do still. And then we have Perryman on the outside here behind Green to give him some mentorship and hopefully help him develop a little bit faster too and i think that is i think i'm happy with all that i i think that's a, a good way to, to sort of move around some of the pieces on this team and yeah i'm excited to see what happens it did jump our defense up we were an 81 overall now we are an 83 overall defense it just goes to show that sometimes a defense is just not in a proper setting to best handle their talent so maybe now we can get ourselves some better gameplay we have a couple of upgrades to do i'm gonna go ahead we're gonna sim pass this week i know that this is a divisional matchup but we are not playing very good we are gonna see the falcons again we'll see them later on in the season um this is only our second one we just watched one this past episode so i want to just get past this we'll get a couple of seasons or a couple of games into the season and then we'll pick things up i think in week six all right, so we ended up getting the win against the Falcons, which is awesome. And now we are in week six, and it's the Giants, and we are both two and three heading into this game. We have an advantage. I think this is the first time all season in every category. We're a better overall. We're a better offense, and we're tied on defense. Now, of course, will we be seeing Bryce Young? I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be him or Desmond Ritter. Um, but I do know that Bryce Young is now a Giants after our trade earlier in this video. Actually, just not that long ago. It's been a while for me because I've been doing the weekly strategy and, and messing around with things. So for me, it's been like an hour or so, <laughs> something like that. And for you guys, it's been like, I don't know, five minutes or something, and maybe not even. Who knows? But regardless, today we got the Giants. This is a game we are going to see today. 
and before we get into that we do have weekly strategy and upgrade players to do so let's start off and let's get to know the giants a little bit all right i'm not sure why bryce young is showing as a 73 now he was a 75 at the trade so it must be his morale is down otherwise he would definitely be above ritter so we'll probably be seeing ritter today running back is led by devin singletary and khalil herbert they also have aj Dillon and tyrone tracy jr at receiver, Malik Neighbors up to an 84. Wandale Robinson, the number two. Darius Slayton at three. Jalen Hyatt and Bryce Ford Wheaton. Man, you guys remember Darius Slayton? Played pretty good for, for me with the Texans franchise. I thought he was going to be the next big thing for the Giants, to be honest with you. Well, not the next big thing, but I thought he was going to be a, a very good player. But he just never really caught on after like that one season that he had where he had a few big plays and a couple of good games and... They thought he was going to be, you know, sort of one of the guys they can rely on. Just hasn't really ever developed into that. At tight end, it's Theo Johnson is the number one guy, of course. 6'6", 264, second year guy. Behind him is Daniel Bellinger. And, of, whoa, look at that. Tommy Tremble, our former tight end, is there. They have Andrew Thomas, and they also drafted Terrell Brackett. I have a feeling that Brackett is starting at right tackle because Evan Neal is a 74. And the rest of the line is pretty you know standard you know mid to high 70s maybe a low 70s here and there but overall decent line defensively they have Derek Barnett on one side along with Samsung Abukum on the other and on the inside of course Dexter Lawrence 97 overall Guy Tuttle behind him Kayvon Thibodeau on the outside Bobby O'Kurik in the middle Darius Mwasa okay uh <laughs> Find him, and then on the other side is Brian Burns. They have a very good pass rush. That is something we're going to have to worry about. We might have to do blitz counter this week. I'm not quite sure yet if that's what we're, we're going to take, but it could be an option for us. Deontay Banks, number one corner, Adoree Jackson, Andrew Phillips, and Cordell Flott. They have a rookie starting at free safety, Levi Griffin, 79 overall, and they also have Tyler Newbin as the strong safety. We are definitely going to do medium pass this week. It seems to be their, their number four in passing right now. So we definitely want to, uh, I don't know how good that stat is, but we're going we're gonna to stick with medium pass. And on defense, yeah, they even the game is like, yeah, you got to do blitz counter this week. 33% zone blitz. We should definitely make sure that we got our ducks in a row. Adding the 5% with man, you got a 38% chance of a blitz coming your way. So we're going to do blitz counter this week. I almost forgot it was time for upgrades. I've been saving them over the last couple of weeks that we have simmed. And now let's get them all taken care of. So Dion Boyd is first up. He is going to be a problem, dude. He is getting so many good upgrades right now. I feel like I would want him to do... I'm going to do an uh, improviser here, I think. Yeah, I think I am. I'm going to try to do an improviser on him. We get a break sack, throw deep, two to mid, one to short, one to throw run, and ability slot. Oh, okay. So now we know Boyd. I, I can't remember if it was him or one of the other players that we saw get an ability slot. We know now that he is going to be at least a superstar or an X-Factor. I don't know. Oh, he's, he's, he's done. He's an X-Factor. Holy crap, guys. I think I, I was that a generational player? No, they got to be like, what, an 85 or something like that or, or above? out of the draft but he was what an 80 he is an 86 overall four or five games into his rookie season he's an x factor and our first pick of the series ends up being awesome what a pick we got brandon stevens up next he has been pretty playing pretty good for us as well um i think here i want to go slot because i have him playing in our slot right now and allowing battle to play outside where i think he's better fits and he's gonna get two to zone one to man one to awareness one tackle to press and then tremont battle is up next and battle i think we are going to do oh he is done he is just a star okay i wow i mean hey it's still better than normal but i just figured with how high of an overall he was he might have a shot at superstar but battle is a star um he right now i think what he needs is tackling and press more than anything of course anytime we can get play recognition or well actually awareness is huge right now where is that going to be gotten from the best i feel like zone might be the play yeah we're gonna go zone here and he's gonna get one to press three to zone so nothing about awareness that's great love to see it Jonathan Brooks also getting an upgrade. He had a pretty good game last week for us. We're going to go straight to elusive for him. No questions about it. 
and he is going to get two ball carrier, a juke, and a spin. Duran Overton also is getting an upgrade, and I think it's not fair that everybody else has gotten him except him. We're going to go Playmaker. Yeah, we are. Playmaker for Overton. Awareness, catching traffic, catching two to deep route, one to medium, two to short, and one to spin move. And he is not unlocked yet. He hasn't had a lot of playing time. I honestly, I feel like I should let him play this week. You guys think I'm crazy for that? I want to see him in the game. We'll take a look before we get to the game. Dalvin Ridley also gets an upgrade. I've really been very impressed with Dalvin Ridley so far this season. We're going to keep going to possession for him. And he is going to get one to catch in traffic, juke, medium, two to release, and short route, one to spec catch, and a step arm. Jamie Robinson, he gets one. We're going to go straight to zone. And he'll get one tackle, two to zone. A lot of upgrades here because I've waited a few weeks to do them. So don't think that I'm just getting a bunch of extra upgrades. I just haven't touched them. And Rashawn Stump, he's also due for playmaker. What does he need, though? He needs medium and short route and release. And I think that is what is the slot is going to actually physical. Hmm. We're going to go playmaker anyway. Yeah. Oh, he got a lot. One break tackle, two to catch in traffic, three catching, two deep, one medium, two to release, one short spec catch, and trucking. Rashawn Stump, who is star development, now at a 70. He could be, you know, he could be a sneaky good player for us down the line, even though he was an undrafted free agent. And then we have Jarrett Kingston up next, our backup right guard. Definitely want to get him more balanced out, so we're going to go agile here for him. And he is going to get one pass, one pass finesse, and two run finesse. Last but not least is Jalen Graham, our new middle linebacker. Well, not new. Former outside linebacker, now inside linebacker. We're going to go pass coverage for him. And he will get two to man and one to zone. Look at, looking at the entire picture here. Overton has now deserved to get above Thielen, I believe, with his, where we picked him, his overall. He is teetering on surpassing one of these guys. I have not seen any of these receivers really just make plays. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody has really come out and really had a statement game yet of the receivers. If anything, Ridley has been that guy. Jordan has it sometimes. Actually, I'm going to put Sanders back in. I want to see him uh, get some more development. Um, but I, what I'm saying is, like, I'm just not seeing a lot of our receivers. And I don't know if it's a playbook problem, a quarterback problem, or a receiver problem yet. But I'm keeping my eye on it because Overton is sitting here in the wings. He is tied for fastest on the team at wide receiver. He's 6'5", for crying out loud. And right now, we don't have anybody better than 6'2", on the field. So I might actually make a play here to get him on the field at some point. Um, maybe this week. We'll see. And we are here in New York. It's time for the game. It is going to be Desmond Ritter. So Bryce Young is still on the bench. Unfortunately, we won't get a chance to see him today, but hopefully in the next few weeks he will overtake that position, which I fully intend he will. And guys, it is another big matchup for us. We need to keep the pedal to the metal and try and get as many wins as we can. Deion Boyd having a little bit of an uptick in success during the sim weeks. He's now up to seven touchdowns, four interceptions on the season, 1,300 yards. And it looks like we are going to be on defense to start things off. And here we go. So Ritter and company come out on offense. They'll take the snap. Ritter immediately... Bombing it deep down the left side. He's got somebody there and is batted away at the last second by Fuller. Jordan Fuller with a big play. It looked as if he had his man beat, but Ritter underthrows it and it allows us to catch back up. Second and 10 now, Ritter keeping with the ball over the middle, dumped down to Robinson and the catch is made and he'll get nine. Nice little gain. To make it third and one here for New York. And they're going to go to the ground game. And it works. Singletary with the first down. Gain of 11. Gets them out across the 40. 
need this defense to, to, to settle down a little bit. Don't let too much crazy stuff happen right out of the gate. Robinson in motion. And they're going for the screen. They will get the screen off, and Singletary's loose off the left side and pushed out of bounds at the 43 on the other side of the 50. Two big plays for Singletary. He's got them on the move. First and 10. Another screen, and then this time it's going to work. Go, oh, maybe not. Didn't work as well. We got through that time. Fuller once again coming up to make the play. And it still will be a gain of seven for New York. So overall, a good play. Ritter over the middle. Completed the Slayton. That'll be another first down. Defense already reeling. Ritter steps up in the pocket. He gets away initially from Stevens, who ends up tracking him down after nine. But we are letting the Giants roll right down the field. Empty set here. Ritter, short pass, almost picked off. J.C. Horn read the comeback route, but unfortunately could not hold on to it. So Ritter gets another sh shot at it. Third and one. Hand off to Singletary. Easy first down. And that's going to be first and goal now to the 10. Two carries, 20 for Singletary. I did wait for the patch to drop before running this game. I wanted to see what this would look like with the updates in tow. And I'm, I'm curious to, to, to find out. Oh, a big play there on the outside. Love to see it. Second and goal. Oh, did we jump? No, we did not. Singletary takes the handoff, gets shut down after not really much. It looked like he may have gotten a yard. I can't remember if it was already spotted at the 12 or if it was back a little bit farther. Third and goal. Ritter under pressure. Trying to find somebody he's got to throw it away, and at least we will hold tight and force the field goal. All right, so a whole lot of nothing has happened so far. We're at 53 seconds left in the first. Uh, the teams have had to just punt, 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 punt. We did lose a fumble on one of our series. Leggett got smacked over the middle, coughed it up, but the Giants ended up having to punt it on a three and out right away after, so I skipped that as well. Um, last drive, it was a tough watch for Deion Boyd. He missed a couple of throws. And which resulted in the punt now, which has led to Ritter and company being back on the field as we come towards the end of the first quarter here. So here we are, third and two to open up the second. Ritter takes a snap, looks over the middle, it's caught, and they're going to say that he had enough for the first. It was Johnson on the catch. New York gets their first first down in what seems like forever. And really it has been. They haven't had a first down since the field goal. No team has. That's including us. We have been horrible so far today. Second and six. Gain of four for Singletary. Offense has been out of rhythm. Defense has been better since the first drive. As a short one there goes, but it's going to be dropped just short. Neighbors not able to get the first down. So it's going to bring up third down. I'm assuming we're going to see a run here from Singletary. It's a handoff, and that is exactly what it is. First and 10, New York. Another first down on the ground. They have done that to us about four or five times today. And each time, we get caught lacking, essentially. They, we're just not paying attention to it. Shut it down there after three. Robinson in motion. Saw this before. Underneath pass. Completed for a short gain. Third and three. These third and shorts, they've been keeping themselves in really good situations for the most part until that missed throw right there from Ritter. Going to force them to attempt another field goal here. And I'm assuming this should be a chip shot. The 47-yarder. It's up. And it is good. New York extends their lead 6 to nothing. Finally, back on offense here. Can we do something with this drive? Boyd takes a snap, under pressure, backpedaling, rolls out, gets a block, and he's going to take off with it. He's got space down the sideline, and finally sliding down at the 47. That is the biggest play of the day for us. 
We don't see him take off too often, but we know he's got the wheels. Using them there, first and 10. Snap again, blitz coming, it's picked up. Looking over the middle, it's caught. Gonna be a gain of five, second and five. It was Ridley on the catch. Brooks now with the handoff. And he finds a nice little crease to get us a first down. Two first downs on this drive, and that quite literally doubled the amount of first downs we had in this game, because we, we had none. <laughs> It was, it was a rough go up until this point. Again, they send Heat. This time it's completed to Peoples-Jones. He'll get nine. So far this drive, Boyd has definitely been getting the ball out quicker. And it's worked. Another quick pass. And again, Peoples-Jones with the catch. Down to the 25, we are in field goal range. But I don't want a field goal. I want to score a touchdown. Okay? So let's make it happen here, Boyd. The handoff to Brooks. And he gets nothing. No blocking help there. Uh, they just... I, I guess they just read it. Had somebody in the gap. Nothing to do. We're going to go right back to him. This time, though, there is plenty of room. And he'll get the first. Okay, here we go. It's first and 10 from the 14. Empty set. Play action. Fires it to Ridley, and Ridley gets in for the touchdown. Dalvin Ridley. One of my favorite players that we've added so far this offseason. We were worried about his health, but so far he's been one of the most consistent targets on offense, and he gets us the lead here. 7-6 to six, midway through the second. Ritter and company back out here down by one. 4.08 to go in the first half. Little pump fake. Ritter pushed out of the pocket. Fires it deep down the left side. He's got a man, and it's completed to Robinson. And Robinson off to the races. Touchdown, New York. A beautiful job by Ritter. Selling the pump fake. Buying time, and then a, an amazing throw. Downfield, just out of the reach of Isaiah Simmons. And Robinson... Doing it big here in the first half for the Giants. Going to put them up 13 to 7. 3.53, and just like that, down by 6 again. Handoff, and it's Sanders up the middle making work. Oh, no. Yep, that's, that's what we've been concerned with is Ridley injury history and concern as he is going to get taken off the field again. First and 10. And off to Sanders. And Sanders finding some big chunks. He's got over 20 yards already on two carries. Play action. Boyd. I don't even know what just happened. That was super strange. Very strange. Back to pass again. This time looking, oh my God, he missed him. He was looking for Sanders out there in the on the out route, but he just, I don't know if it was a timing issue or what, but that was nowhere near where he needed to put it. Boyd looking right again. This time it's completed. And it is, who is that? Oh, it's Leggett making the catch. Gets it first and 10 down to the 29. Moving a little bit now on offense. Two and a half to go. Both teams still with all three timeouts. Play action again. Boyd under pressure. Fires it to the end zone. It's intercepted. He was looking for what it appears to be Jonathan Mingo, and he found Tyler Newbin instead. And the Giants with their second turnover of the day. Oh, man. Not a good way to end this drive. I mean, he, he felt the pressure. I think he just chucked it. You, you just can't do those things. It's triple coverage down there. And that's just never going to work. Unfortunate way to end that drive. Especially considering New York just had that huge play for a touchdown on the last series. They have all the momentum in the world right now. And off to Singletary. Tries to get it outside. Simmons shuts it down after two. That brings us to the two-minute warning. Ritter. Short. It's completed. He'll get a few yards. It was Hyatt on the catch. Third and two. 
Singletary in motion. Ritter under pressure, hit as he throws, but it's still caught. Somehow it is still caught by Johnson, the tight end. I thought that ball was being batted down, but instead it goes for a big completion and a big time gain. Now under a minute left, New York looking to potentially add some points here. We send the Heat. Heat does not get there in time, but it does get there with enough to force the incomplete and bad throw. Like to see that. Anytime we can get some extra pressure, it's always it's always something I want to see. Second and 10. Ritter under pressure again, and it's Brown with the sack in the backfield. Second one of the day for us. Third and 20. They called a timeout for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. I feel like that would have been something we would have done. But okay. Singletary takes it, and now we'll call our timeout. All right, so we have time. And we have timeouts. Let's see if we use them. Boyd is going to throw it underneath. It's completed to Sanders. He'll get eight to start this drive. Not a big fan of the short throw. We burn a timeout already. And we're not even across the 35-yard line. Got to sort of do something downfield. There it is. Downfield shot to Sanders, and that one is also completed. Down inside the 40. We're not going to call our uh, timeout yet. We're going to run one more play. Boyd under pressure. Roll forced out of the pocket. He's going to run with it. And oh, he fumbles it. You've got to be kidding me. And that is going to end the half. We get no points out of that. Here we go to open up the second half. We do have the ball. Play action to Sanders. Flag down. He finds Ridley open, who's back from injury. But I have a feeling it's coming back, probably on another holding call. And it is. That's unfortunate. Taylor Moten gets called. And um, I have a feeling that Jonathan Brooks got hurt. I, let me exit this game here quick after this play. I haven't seen him in the game for quite some time. As Sanders takes it, and he will get the first down. Okay, so I went and checked, and yeah, Brooks got hurt. I don't remember seeing the injury screen or anything, but he's done for the season. It's not just a out for game. It's torn pectoral, and he's done. So it's going to be Miles Sanders and Theo Judge. I do have Sanders staying as the main running back. We'll see if anybody else gets into the play. Sanders... Is looking good, though, on the few carries we've seen him on. And takes it for uh, four there. I'm not sure why I thought it was a first down that he got when it was... So here we go. Boyd throws it outside. It's Ridley, like I said, back from injury. Gets the first down. I wish there was a way to improve his injury. I really do. Because he just seems to have a special... Like, he, he just makes plays, you know? There's Miles Sanders inside the 40 to the 39. I just have a feeling without him being able to stay on the field long term, how how much can you rely on him as the number one tight end, you know, for years? You know what I mean? It almost seems like a, like he is capped at being a, a second option or 1A, 1B type of role at tight end. We'll see what happens. It's still early. Boyd underneath to Sanders breaks past the first line and gets the first Sanders has been playing very good for us first in 10 judge now in the backfield Sanders is in motion and it's going to be a run and judge tries to find a crease there's not much available two yards on the play second and eight Sanders back in now same type of formation. Let me hand off to him. And Sanders himself trying to find room, and he's also only able to get two. Third and six. Going on this side, a single back. It's going to be a pass. Boyd over the middle. Completed, and it's going to be a first down. It's Jonathan Mingo. I just feel like we don't have a legitimate number one right now. I, I know that Peoples Jones was never going to be the number one. I just knew we needed some extra bodies at the receiver position, but we just we don't have anybody that's really making plays at us at the receiver position. There's nobody really standing out. I mean, they're getting the, the routes that they should get done, but 
to say that anybody is really making significant plays and jumping off the screen on a weekly basis is just, it wouldn't be true. I really need to start seeing that. Boyd over the middle, and there it is from Ridley. We see it out of him all the time. Second touchdown of the day. And that is going to put us back in the lead. It's going to be 14 to 13 after the extra point. Look at that. Just a strike. Good route from Ridley. Defense doesn't see it coming. And we'll get ourselves back in front. Here we go. New York back on offense. Third quarter, 447 to go. Ritter takes a snap, rolling out, fires it deep, and it's batted down. It's Simmons on the coverage. Second time we've seen them try to go deep and our safeties have been able to bat the ball down on what appears to be a little bit of a short throw. Little motion here. Giants looking underneath the Robinson. He'll get a few yards, make it third and five. More motion here. Ritter takes a snap. Looking left side, completed from Slayton. And he's dragged down at the 41, but he'll get the first and move the chains for New York. Little play action it looked like. Once again going left side. It's completed for a gain of five. Not sure how they called that a catch. It looked like he was out of bounds, but we'll we'll let it slide. And Singletary getting to the left, and he'll get almost a first. Four yards on the play, just short of it. Third and one coming up. We have seen them do this before where they get this third and one and the up they do that exact play out of it and they'll get the first down every time defense really needs to start catching on to these things that i'm catching on uh to like you know i'm not a savant here by any means ritter with the snap looking right side completed a slate and again down inside the 25 and they'll mark him at the 19. New York putting together a good drive once again. And Ritter delivering some good passes. And now it's looking like we might be losing this lead once again. It's been back and forth today. Not a high scoring game, but back and forth nonetheless. As Singletary gets another chunk of four. We're coming to the end of the third quarter here. This should be the last play. And it is. All right, third and five here to open up the fourth quarter. Robinson in motion. Ritter goes to Robinson on the out route and gets it. First down, New York again. Motioned over. Nobody went with him. He knew it was going to be some type of zone. Had a quick shot at him, took it. It pays off. First and goal now from the eight. Singletary with the handoff, but he gets tracked down in the backfield. It's Wallace coming through to bring him down. Forcing second and goal. Three all split out to the left. Hand off again. And he's shut down again. Nothing there. Love to see it. They get that a lot in third and short situations. We just need the defense to start stepping up and actually doing something about that play. Third and goal. Ritter. Running outside the pocket, he goes down. That's another sack, third one today, and it's Wanham getting his second of the day. And we will at least hold him the three here in the fourth quarter. Deion Boyd today has had some good plays. Him and Ridley have really developed a really good chemistry and have hooked up today twice for touchdowns. The only real question about this, this duo is how consistent can Ridley be when it comes to his health? So far, we've seen a few games where he's had to leave. Hand off to Sanders, who has a big lane right away. You know, he'll get eight yards. He has had some really good success since spelling in for the now injured Jonathan Brooks. Second and two. Hand off. And Sanders fighting his way forward to the first, but he's unable to get all the way there. He'll be stopped just inches shy. And now we're going to go and single back here for third and inches. Got to expect we're going to run it here. We do. No. Play action. Boyd throws it back to him. He drops it. No way.
You gotta be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. I had a sneeze coming, so I had I had to mute the mic for a second just in case I sneezed. I think seeing that happen just took any sense of me having to do that away. What in the world? We are falling apart here. Come on, guys. Go right back to him. This time, not a lot there. Gain of two. Second and eight. Ritter looking. He completes it to Singletary. I thought it was Slayton for a second, but then I realized he was way too short. And wow, the Giants are trying to put, put us out of our misery here early. Six left, six minutes left, and they're inside the 10 looking to score. Ritter underneath completed. That time it's a Slayton. He'll get down to the two. Oh, he's going for a keeper. Have not seen that very much this year. He'll get a yard out of it. Single back, Robinson in motion here. We're gonna go for a pass out of it. Ritter under pressure, he goes down yet again. Fourth sack of the day. And that one is Johnson. Talking a little smack. DJ Johnson getting involved, that's one for him. We got one for Derek Brown, and then of course two for Wanham, and then we'll hold them to once again three points, which should be big for us, because now we are within five points, and we don't need more than one drive to take this lead back. It seems like a reoccurring theme so far this season, but it's been on Deion Boyd a few games. The question is, can he step up though? We've seen a few times where he does not do that. 3.55 to go, first and 10 from our own 26, and he immediately hits the lineman. This is what I'm talking about. Come on, man. Need you to, need you to calm down a little bit. Throws it outside, completed. First down, I was not able to see who that completion was to. But we'll get to the 37, first down. Mingo in motion. It's handoff to Sanders. And Sanders breaks off of one. He'll get nine and a half. I was a little mad at Sanders after that last drive when he dropped it on the, on the conversion there, the third down conversion. But if he can make some plays on this drive, maybe I will forgive him. Peoples Jones in motion now to the right. Play action, Boyd gonna run with it. And he does not get away from the pressure. The Giants get their first sack of the day. And it comes in a very, very bad timing for us. We'll hand it off to Sanders, who gets the first down. Definitely needed that to keep this drive alive. Not be worried about needing a couple of yards. Keep ahead of the sticks, you know, to try and alleviate as many concerns as Boyd has to have as possible. We have two minutes to work with. Boyd, under pressure, push out of the pocket, fires it deep down the sideline. He's got Mingo. Down to the 25. That was a good throw. He put it on a line to him. It looked like Banks got a little confused on which way he was going and if the safety was going with him. We're going to take advantage of that all the time. Empty set here now. The end zone within reach. Boyd takes a snap. Looking. Over the middle, it's completed, and it's Overton getting his first catch of the day. Getting him involved a little bit. Nice to see. He hasn't been on the field very much today, though. He's still in the game. Pump fake. Boyd underneath, and it's Overton again with the catch. And he's going to get it down to the seven. Second and three. Boyd. Looking for Ridley. He, he, he stayed on his feet. Holy shit. I can't. I thought he was down. But he stays on his feet and gets in the end zone for the touchdown. His third of the day. This man is going crazy right now. Completes it. 
gets hit once, twice, whatever it was, stays on his feet and gets in the end zone. What an amazing play by the rookie tight end. And we're going to go for two. I don't know how to count. We were down by six. Oh, no. He got it. Leggett. Two points is good. We're up 22-19. We just need this defense to hold on this drive. That's all we need. We just need you to do your job, guys. Minute eight to go. The Giants have all three timeouts. They need a field goal to tie. Of course, a touchdown to win. Ritter takes the snap. He looks over the middle, and it's incomplete. Thompson was on the coverage. And it just looked like a bad pass. It didn't look like it was too much craziness by our defense there. Singletary in motion. We've seen this a few times. Wallace is going out. Keep an eye on that. That's sort of a mismatch there. But Ritter's going to go a different direction. And it's batted down. It was Shaw Smith Wade on the coverage. Forcing the third down. Another motion. They've been doing a lot of motion today. Ritter. He's got time. He's going to take off. He's got room to the first, and he gets it on second effort. We just let a quarterback muscle past two defenders for the first down. I don't know how I feel about that. Takes a quick snap. Looking over the middle. It's incomplete. It went through the hands of Johnson. Wallace back through Johnson's and finally hit the turf. 49 seconds now. Ritter. Again over the middle, and oh man, he missed his target. Battle celebrating, but he didn't really do anything. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy, dude. Third down. Ritter. Needs something. Pushed out of the pocket. Under pressure. And as he throws, fires it to the end zone. It's batted down. It's Simmons. And now it's going to be down to a fourth down conversion. The Giants have to go for it. They have no choice. A first down here could put them in field goal range, though, which could put us to overtime. Ritter takes a snap. Got all day. And he finds an open Slayton down inside the 30. The Giants are well within field goal range now. And they have a fresh set of downs. One timeout to work with. Ritter over the middle, dumps it down to Robinson. Seventh catch of the day. It, he has now 107 yards. Giants going with a handoff here. And it does not go for much, but it will go enough to get another first. And they're going to try one more shot at the end zone. Three, two. Oh, my God. He fumbled it. And it didn't matter anyway. They wasted their chance. And we win off of stupidity by the other team. Oh, man. you got to be mad if you're a Giants fan watching this right now. Or, I, I guess, used to it. Because they, they do a lot of dumb things, it seems. But, man. Boyd coming through. Ridley coming through in a big way. It's going to get us another win. And we are going to get back to 500. That is a big milestone for us right now. Man, I'm excited about what this team is turning into. We are starting to see some of these players come to life a little bit. And after that win, we are now at 3-3. Three and three. We have the Bills this next week, the Dolphins, and then it's the Buccaneers again. So it's been a very... It's been an interesting season so far. We do have word that, of course, our running back, Jonathan Brooks is out for the season torn pectoral so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna place him on ir and um we're gonna have to bring somebody else in the question is do we bring in another like another free agent do we try to trade for a you know for a, a new running back you know is there one available let's check out on the on the trade center here see if there's anybody available in the on the trade block maybe there's somebody interesting there oh Okay, there there is. There's quite a few names here. We have Montgomery from the Lions, Tony Pollard, Tyler Algier, Jerome Ford, Bucky Irving. That would be a very interesting one. Blake Gorham. Ooh, Michigan man. 
stuck behind the line uh, behind uh, Kyron Williams there in LA. Ray Davis, Marshawn Lloyd, Jalen. Oh, there's a lot of young talent here too, not just veterans. Okay, this might be something we have to keep an eye on. This might be something we have to consider. I don't know. I just, I'm not sure. I mean, we have Theo Judge, but we know he's he's probably not going to be an all-around back, right? He's going to be a power back. Is Sanders somebody we want to rely on for the entire season? He's sort of hit that, not that he's at his complete ceiling, but he's he's on the top floor, you know? Like, he's, he's not going to overnight become a 90 overall. He's not going to be that kind of a, a development player. So, I don't know. That's something to think about. Let me know down below what you guys think about that. Maybe going after a running back or two. We do have Taylor Moten, who is still refusing to sign with us, that we could use as trade bait on one of these teams, you know, to try and, and make something work with a running back. So that is a possibility. But as for this video, that's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think of the potential of the trade for a running back, or if you think we should stick with Sanders. Maybe we give Judge a chance. I want to hear what your guys' thoughts are down below. Also, if you are liking the way this is working, please let me know that as well. I'm trying to get feedback on how I'm working the franchise this year, how we've only watched a few games, yet we're already mid-season, or is that something that you guys do not like? Or if you like it, I'm just not doing it right. Don't let me know. I, I'm up for all types of comments and constructive criticism, so please let me know down below. Before you leave, if you get that like button, subscribe if you have not already, and turn on the bell notification, and I will see you guys next time.